Be on the other side of that ring against Goldberg. Expect the WCW legend to come out of the gate with an onslaught of offense. Settle in, guys. This is going to be a blast to watch. No one has been as dominant in that ring as Goldberg. His WCW streak was legendary, but he can still defeat any competitor in a matter of seconds. Oh, Goldberg became WCW champion in 1998 and WWE Universal champion in 2017. No matter what the decade, Goldberg gets it done. The steel cage is a massive enclosure that stands 15 feet in height. For almost 35 years, a select group of high flyers have taken their aerial assaults to greater heights. And when I say that, I mean superstars climb to the top of the steel cage, the real high red district, and dive off onto their opponent. And that all started with one man in October of 1983. Jimmy Superfly Snuka. To your point earlier, Byron, we've definitely seen some unbelievable attacks be launched from the top of the steel cage. And you mentioned the most iconic, the steel cage match for the Intercontinental Championship that saw Jimmy Superfly Snuka clash against bitter rival, the magnificent Morocco. There's no denying that Superfly set the bar. You look over the years to people like Jeff and Matt Hardy, Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle, and Chris Jericho, they continued to push the envelope and executed unbelievable attacks from the top of the cage. And watch Rikishi take flight off the top of the steel cage. Wow. Strength. Clearly on a mission here. What's the next move for Goldberg to turn things around quickly to remain in this thing? You have to wonder if he could recover from this, guys. This cage really has gotten the best of him tonight so far. So much so that it makes me question if he even has what it takes to win this thing. But if you're counting him out now, you haven't been paying attention. He has more resolve than just about anybody on the roster. That'll have you worrying about long-term injuries for sure. It's all academic from here. The human body can only absorb so much of that. Goldberg is going out that fast here to stay in this. If anybody can do it, Goldberg can. He started this match in great health, but now it seems fatigue has set in. He has got to do something quick. I can't really tell what his game plan was heading into this match, but whatever it was, it definitely hasn't been working. Goldberg is making his presence known. Goldberg got him there. Ow, that hurts. Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. This guy can go toe to toe with anybody. Look out, you gotta believe this one's over. The steel cage is a massive enclosure that stands 15 feet in height. For almost 35 years, a select group of high flyers have taken their aerial assaults to greater heights. And when I say that, I mean superstars climb to the top of the steel cage, the real high rent district, and dive off onto their opponent. And that all started with one man in October of 1983, Jimmy Superfly Snuka. To your point earlier, Byron, we've definitely seen some unbelievable attacks be launched from the top of the steel cage. And you mentioned the most iconic, the steel cage match for the Intercontinental Championship that saw Jimmy Superfly Snuka clash against bitter rival, the magnificent Morocco. There's no denying that Superfly set the bar. You look over the years to people like Jeff and Matt Hardy, Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle, and Chris Jericho. They continued to push the envelope and executed unbelievable attacks from the top of the cage. And watch Rikishi take flight off the top of the steel cage. Wow, the rivalry between Ultimate Warrior. Here he comes, guys! Look at this! Oh, my! He's making a statement here with this attack. That's another pile driver. Corey, the WWE Championship match between the Ultimate Warrior and Ravishing Rick Rude was the second half of the double main event at 1990 SummerSlam. The rivalry between the Warrior and the Ravishing One was so heated that no one knew what to expect once the two men were able to battle inside a steel cage, which at the time was the most grueling match in all of WWE. The Ultimate Warrior dominated early on with his incredible strength. Rick Rude turned the tables and used the steel surroundings to his advantage. At one point, Rude dove from the top of the cage onto the Warrior. But after the Warrior's signature Gorilla Press Slam, the Ultimate One climbed over the cage and retained his WWE Championship. There's a certain feeling that comes over the combatants in the steel cage match once they hear the door close and see the official lock it. Goldberg is looking to finish this. Oh, boy.
What a match! You spoke about this earlier, Corey. It's crucial for a WWE superstar to fully understand the gravity of the situation they're in when they battle inside a 15-foot high steel cage. An individual must be ready to endure pure brutality and be prepared for the fight of their life. No one leaves a steel cage match without scars. Corey, you said something of value for once and that anything is legal inside the steel cage. To that point, something else we've seen over the years is interference. Whether it's The Undertaker coming up through the ring or John Cena getting bashed in the head with the cage door from the outside, it's all legal in the cage. This is what makes him one of the best in the business. He's trying to mangle his face here. We talk about how important stipulations are in a steel cage match. If superstars sign a contract where the only way to win is escape the cage and have both your feet touch the floor, the competitors must have a plan. Especially since you have to be comfortable trying to escape through the cage door as you do climbing over the top of the cage and vice versa. Corey, you touched on something moments ago that's so important for the combatants in a steel cage match to remember. A superstar must be able to think offensively to figure out how they're going to escape the cage. They must think defensively at the same time so they can prevent their opponent from getting out of the cage first and winning the match. While well, a superstar must become comfortable with escaping the cage by both exiting the cage door and by climbing over the top of the cage, they must also be aware of their attributes and what's best for them. Let's just say if you're a giant like The Big Show, The Undertaker, Kane, or even Braun Strowman, it's preferred to exit through the cage door. According to historians, the twisted metal that we see as part of steel cages today dates back 80 years. To settle a dispute between competitors Jack Bloomfield and Count Pietro Rossi, the two met inside a ring surrounded by chicken wire. At first, these types of matches were referred to as fence matches. He's looking a little weary here. He'll need to find a way to turn things around here. The amount of punishment he's absorbed in this match is absolutely insane. A lesser man would have given up and walked away by now. The bottom line here is that despite what's going on right now, he's still in much more favorable health than his opponent. And what a reversal from Goldberg. Eludes that one. And then some. Goldberg, that's it. It's over. It's over. Just a crushing blow from Goldberg. We're witnessing a level of punishment that can only be described as severe. Somebody get the hose. This guy's on fire. Goldberg is looking golden right now. What force on that slant, making Goldberg wait until Spear, Jackhammer, new champion. We'll revisit Goldberg versus Kevin Owens. Goldberg is looking at this right now. Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. A sickening thud as his body is driven to the mat. Power! Spinebuster! Great! I have to think that's it. Game, set, match. This one is over. We're going to take another look at this. I can watch this move over and over. He's inflicting some serious pain here. You have to possess a different type of focus to punish an opponent like this. Spinebuster on the pine! Oh, I think this man means business. The WWE Universe has seen the evolution of the steel cage in the enclosure known today as Hell in a Cell. The first time an enclosed cage was seen was in October of 1983 in the last battle of Atlanta. The enclosed cage was seen a few years later. Looking for a repeat. This is what makes him one of the best in the business. Looking for an encore here. That's how you put an exclamation point on the end of a match, guys. Did you see the impact on that? Wow. All right, we talk about the progression of steel cage matches and the type of structures that have been spawned from them. I need to point out that some cages have been electrified. One was made from bamboo in the form of a Punjabi prison match. And of course, the elimination chamber with glass pods and steel doors. Uh, I think this is the beginning of the end. He's inflicting some serious pain here. Incredible. This has to be it. Nicely done. But if anybody can come back from this, it has got to be Goldberg. Guys, let's go to the replay. Yeah, I definitely need to see that again. We talk about how important stipulations are in a steel cage match. If superstars sign a contract with him, this will go down as one of his hardest fought battles. Game over.